My name is M.M. Brahman. I am a WBU Plant Pathology Extension Specialist. Today I would like to show you a very common and important disease of tomato, which is uh, septoria leaf spot. This disease is caused by a fungal pathogen, septoria lycophersisi. The symptom of this disease includes numerous brown spots, it's normally on the lower leaves of the of tomatoes and eventually those tiny spots enlarge and then become up to one sixteenth to one eighth of an inch in diameter. And in all cases, you know, septoria leaf spot starts from the lower leaves because it the inoculum is coming from the soil from the overwintering debris. So when those spots become enlarged, they actually merge together and then can blight the whole leaf. Inside those lesions, the centers of those lesions become kind of grayish, and inside those gray areas, there are lots of pycnidias. Those are actually spore-producing fruiting body of that fungus. Inside one pycnidia, thousands of conidia or spore can be produced with the rain or if someone is sprinkling water on the, on the, on the spores, those spores or conidia can be splashed on healthy leaves and then cause new infection. These leaves eventually, as you can see here, get completely blighted and then fall off which we call early defoliation of those leaves. So these fallen leaves actually keep the disease from one season to another. So that's why the disease management option for septoria leaf spot basically includes removal of these fallen leaves at the end of the season. And it really depends on how good or how well one grower can remove these fallen leaves or fallen plant debris from the growing area or production area. And also, as you can see, these fallen leaves will keep the disease in, the, in this area. So uh, it's always wise to rotate tomato production area from one year to another. But in many cases, if you do not have the option to rotate, then obviously we have other options that you can use to manage the disease. Those options will include use of mulch. What we are here using here is plastic mulch, but it's not mandatory that you, can, you will have to use plastic mulch. You can use other mulch, basically, to create a barrier where the inoculum of the fungal pathogen is on the soil and is so that it cannot come in terms of the lower leaves. And there are few other cultural options that growers can use, such as removal of the lower leaves. When the plants are in first bloom, then obviously lower leaves are not really contributing a lot to the carbohydrate uh, production. And so those leaves can be taken out. Basically that uh, what it does, it's just, you know, like the touching leaves in the, in the, with the soil. If you remove those, so the inoculum cannot come on the leaves and they cannot start the early infection. And also there are some other options when this disease is actually favored by hot and humid environment. And also if, if it's rainy, then the disease will keep going up and then it can actually under favorable disease condition, it can defoliate all the leaves within 20 to 25 days. So it's always prudent growers uh, can use some of those cultural practices as, as using drip tape rather than sprinkling water on the leaves or foliage. And also, it is always good to keep the plants upright by using stakes. 
uh, or some other some cases. So what what it does actually it can help plants drying up very quickly. And there are few other options for supporting quick foliage drying, such as you know like putting the plants oil distanced. So the spacing of the plant and also the row orientation that allows sunlight penetration and air movement that can also be helpful for quick foliage drying. So if the foliage is dry if, and the fungal spore or conidia is coming on the leaves, they cannot germinate and they cannot initiate the disease. But uh, there are few exceptional cases, especially in a rainy and humid season, you are doing all the cultural practices. Unfortunately, we do not have many resistant varieties against septoria leaf spot. So the disease, you can still see the disease. So you have to apply some products that can keep the disease under control, especially for organic growers. They can use products like uh, copper, CHEMP, that's the, the trade name of that, uh, that is approved in the organic production system. And there are also a few biological based products like Serenade and Actinobate. But keep in mind that if you are using those biological based product or even copper, you have to start using them early, especially like uh, during the first bloom and then later on on a weekly basis. Uh, these are obviously not the most effective products, so you have to use them proactively and uh, that way you can keep the disease under control. In some cases we found that if you are using these products in combination with some other products like resistance inducers, regalia, that can actually enhance the disease control. So, but for other conventional growers, there are other products that can be more useful, more effective, such as chlorothalonil. And there are many trade names. If you go to buy those products, just look at the uh, active ingredient chlorothalonil and also mancozeb. These two products, if you uh, alternate on a weekly basis, you can get very good results. Uh, once again, even within the conventional group of products, these are not the most effective product, but if you start using them early, you can get very good results. There are some other more effective products, such as Quadris, Quadris Top, Riva Top, uh, and uh, there are other products. Those are mostly used by commercial growers and you have to basically buy them in, in bulk. So for small growers, always the best option is to combine the cultural practices and use of products uh, proactively to get the best result in management of this disease. So if you have any questions on how to best manage this disease, uh, you can uh, send me an email uh, you can find my email address uh, on the website, WBO website, and also we have fact sheet uh, on the extension website that you can use uh, to decide what are the best options for you to manage the disease.